Look, we've got a connection now, look. Connected, there you go. There you go, let you send me a message. <laughs> Hi Andy. That is so blooming cool. Welcome back to the channel guys. Hope everyone's doing well. So I've been having a lot of fun lately playing around with Packet Radio. Now Packet Radio is a kind of digital mode that we can use as, as ham radio operators to communicate with each other, send position reports using GPS and, and stuff like that. It's really, really cool, really interesting. Now APRS, I've been playing, I've been using APRS for a long, long time, just you know, to broadcast my position and send in um, position reports. But what I actually wanted to start playing with is the real old school original packet radio which allows ham radio operators to communicate with computers connected to radios. You know, I was doing all that stuff with the DMR data modes and D-Star data, that kind of thing. But this is like the original thing and it's so freaking cool. I found out that there's actually a kind of local group that are bang into this. As with all ham radio stuff, you're always finding new parts to the hobby. That's why I love it so much. But the whole thing kind of started when I was scouring the bands, just normally just looking around two meters. And I noticed that there was some packet data happening on 144.9375 megahertz. Now, most of the APRS stuff is happening at 144.800. So I was like, what is, what is this? A bit strange. So I got to kind of decoding it just with a simple you know, app on the phone, you can do that, you can decode um, messages. And I got a few call signs. And then I started Googling around. I was like, wow, this is so cool. There's a node in London that you can connect to, and there's lots of other amateur radio operators doing exactly the same thing. And it turns out there's chat, there's email, there's loads of stuff you can actually do on the computer, keyboard to keyboard typing. Basically, it's just a whole nother world that isn't dependent on the internet. How cool is that? So then came the first hurdle. How the heck am I actually gonna get this thing set up and connect to this node? I've, I've got no idea how to do it. The only thing I do know is I've actually got a lovely Kenwood THD74 here, which has got a built-in KISS TNC. Now, that is basically what you need to connect to one of these um, servers. But how do you connect the software to this? You know. Absolutely no idea at all. So the next kind of week was spent kind of fiddling around and working this out and that is the purpose of this video guys because I wanted to show you guys, particularly the ones that have got these radios, how you can use this radio to actually connect to nodes, do chat and just be a part of Packet Radio because I think some of you are gonna love this. Right, so as I mentioned, I'm using the Kenwood THD74 to do this. Um, it should be noted you can't use the Yaesu radios with built-in APRS because they don't have a way of actually accessing the TNC um, built into the radio. It's it's just, a, they're just APRS radios, basically. This has APRS features um, and it also has a full-blown KISS TNC, which is absolutely amazing. So you can see on the screen here, um, I've actually got it set to um, KISS 12, which is 1200 board KISS. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And also the thing about this radio is it has Bluetooth, so you can connect to the radio by Bluetooth and actually make use of the TNC over Bluetooth, which is super cool. You can also do it by USB, but I've heard there's problems with that. Also, I don't like connecting these radios by USB because you end up with loads of noise um, you know, from the computer or whatever you've connected it to. It Packet seems to be quite sensitive to um, to noise on the signal. So you know, you're better off having this by Bluetooth. Also, it means you can then just put this radio somewhere else or even put it high up if you're going, if you're kind of working portable and have your computer sort of, you know, low down with you. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is a computer to connect to the radio by Bluetooth. I've actually found that a Raspberry Pi works best here because most of the software is actually built in. Um, it's a lot easier, well it is for me, kind of managing stuff in Linux than it is on Windows. Um, and you are gonna need some extra software on Windows to make this all work. I will do another video to explain how to set it up on Windows. But for the purposes of this video, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3. There it is behind the screen there in a nice case. These have got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. So the Raspberry Pi 3 has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in which makes connecting things just so much easier. You haven't got to worry about kind of putting USB dongles and that sort of stuff in. Right, you still with me? Bear with me, guys. This is so worth doing. You've got to, got to persevere. So now we've got to set up the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth connection to the radio. Don't do it through the OS because it doesn't work properly if you do that. So we've got to do it in the command line. And then we've just got to install AX25, which is like the communications protocol. And then we're pretty much done. So it's not going to be too bad. Right, so if we just dive into the Raspberry Pi here, um, you'll see that I've got text editor open here, which has got the commands we need to run. This is a fresh install of Raspbian straight from the Raspberry Pi website. Um, it's probably best to do that because then you get a clean install. So I'm gonna open up a terminal and then I'm gonna 
you know, start by installing these two AX25 apps and AX25 tools. Now on this machine, I've already done this, so it won't obviously let me do it, but I'll give you the, the process of doing it. Just copy those commands into the command line there, or into the terminal, and it will say, look, it's already done that. Um, so that's fine. It would be the same with the AX25 tools as well. Um, so you can run those and that will install those um, dependencies. Now, the next thing you've got to do is put the Bluetooth module into a kind of, you know, a discoverable or, or scanning mode. And you do that with these commands. So like HGI config, HGI Pi scan, you can hit that. And then you see up here, the Bluetooth is actually kind of going into a sort of like a pairing mode. Um, now, don't try and pair through the OS, like doing that. It will let you, but it won't work. Trust me, because it's not, you know, doing... Um, it's not doing it the right way. So just go through each of the commands here. Um, now at this point, it's a good idea to put your radio into Bluetooth discovery mode. So, so go into settings, go to Bluetooth and hit pairing mode and it will go into pairing mode. Now you can do this one command here, HCI tool scan. So copy, and don't do that. Um, so we'll copy that one. Now you only get like, I think you get a minute or so to before the, the uh, THD74 stops going into discoverable mode. So if we do HCI scan, it will scan, and what you should see is your um, D74 show up in there. You might have to move it a bit closer to the actual thing. There you go. So what you can see there is a MAC address. So next, you run this command, this export command, and you would insert the MAC address of your um, particular radio. So you can see my one is ends in 0B and that one's in 0B. Now if you hit enter at this one, that then just, you know, sets the MAC address of that. And then what you can do then is the next command and what that will do is that will actually connect to the radio. So then you should see the Bluetooth thing come on, the Bluetooth emblem come on on the actual radio itself. Um, mine is now connected and you get this connection successful um, sign there. So that actually tests the connection and you actually want to disconnect now so you can do control c that disconnects it now what we want to do now is we want to bind that device to the rf com um zero and this gets a little bit kind of you know tricky to understand but if you just do this um it will then set up all the variables that we need to do this next command which is the kiss attach one now what this does is just creates a network um, connection and that means that our modem is available on that connection so if we just hit go now um, it will say port radio bound to device ax zero there now we've got another connection cut happening which is the one we want and that radio will stay connected now now really this up here is flashing it doesn't need to be in um, discoverable mode so you can stop discoverable and it will still remain connected so now that device you know our thd74 device is connected and we can send data backwards and forwards to it so this is the exciting bit so we go over to our radio you need to make sure you're in kiss 12 mode so you do that by pushing function 5 and you can toggle between um, aprs and kiss now we want it in kiss 12 that's the right one and then you also need to go down to interfaces in the settings here and set these Basically, the one we're interested in is KISS. Now, that needs to be set to Bluetooth. Once that's done, it will work. I've set all the others to USB, and it's fine. There's been mixed reports of different you know, people using, using different settings. But um, as of the latest firmware um, of this, it is all working nicely with this set the way it's supposed to be. So, yeah, there you go. Interface there, back. And if we just kind of listen on this frequency now, we should start hearing some packet. 144937 seems to be the frequency that everybody's using at the moment around here for um for for packet. I think it must be it's definitely an allocation, an allocated frequency. Um but yeah, there's that is where the activity is, center of the activity is is on this on this band. So not APRS, actually kind of you know packet modes, direct communication. So depending on where you are, you might hear it, you might not. Um I'm using as I say, big antenna outside. You won't be able to do this unless you're really close to the node or somebody that else is running 
um, a packet station. You won't be able to do this on on a handheld antenna. Um, at very least, there you go, some packet. So we know something's there. So with everything now set up and connected, we can actually attempt to try and call something. And we're going to try this node GB7KUX. Um, so the command is AX call radio GB7KUX. And you just do this in the terminal. Now this is a really simple way of doing it. Um, it's not the best and I'll show you a much better way to do it after. But if we hit enter here, there you go, it's saying it's trying to connect. And if we look at the radio, we should see a little red TX light come on. There you go. Attempting to call that node. Now right now the weather is shocking and it is not a good, I'm not getting a very strong signal from it. So I don't think um, we're going to get a good connection here. So as luck would have it, I've been connecting perfectly over the last few days and all of a sudden now I can't do it when I'm trying to do the video. That's ham radio for you. But we'll persevere and what I'll do is I'll show you a better way of just using the terminal um, with the AX call command because it, you know, it's not the best. It's better to use a good bit of software um, written for the job rather than, you know, some sort of command line stuff. And the bit of software is called Pi QT Term TCP. Nice catchy name. Sounds like something you'd put on a cut. So this is a bit of software here, guys. Um, you can download it for Raspberry Pi as a binary there from that link. So it's a good idea to get this. This is a really good bit of software because it actually shows you what's going on whilst it's trying to connect. It shows you packets incoming. It can take um, connections as well from other people so they can connect direct to you. Um, so yeah, that is that bit of software. You have to basically download it and then you need to make it executable. Um, if you don't know how to do that, check that out. You know, Just Google it. When you open it up, see, the thing is, you'll find that you need to configure this sort of setup here um, you need to enable the KISS interface and you need to put in your call sign here. Selecting the TNC, um, normally it would come up with RF comm device there. What you can do is just run those last two commands, like export and the one, the RF comm connect. Once you do that, you should see this actually connect down here. There you go, it's saying connected. Um, and this KISS open thing failed, it should click in in a minute, there you go, KISS connected. So that's now set up, and what you can do here is you can just go KISS connect, and then you can either try calling that, you know, that station there, or we'll try calling um, uh, Brian again, and see what happens. So you can see now it actually tells you what it's doing each time. That, I've connected my um, radio up to a little amp, so I can run 10 watts. Look, we've got a connection now, look. Not connected, there you go. So we've now connected to my friend Brian here, who's, who's basically got one set up. We've received this information here. Welcome to G0S2O's packet station running the sound modem, an easy term. There's so much to this, guys. You know, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot more videos on this. But we can say, um, you know, I can type in here directly to um, to Brian. There you go. Look, he sent me a message. <laughs> hi, Andy. Uh, hi, Brian. Um, just making a video. And um, you can hear the relay click on my, my little amplifier. And we'll see what um, see what he says. So I'm getting here, you can see that's the packet going out. And there's lots of information happening here. The way the software works, it will kind of acknowledge that it's received your message and keep trying to send it. If it doesn't, it's, um, it's very clever. I can say, you know, having trouble logging into um, GB7KUX. Uh, X is a bit dodgy in this key world today. So if we turn up the radio, you'll be able to hear hear the packets going backwards and forwards. Let's see, so cool, isn't it? And this is direct. You know, this is not going through any node. This is like simplex. Oh, that seems like a better signal now. Awesome. It's probably because I'm running a little bit more power than the five watts. Um, you know, just taking it up to ten watts through the amplifiers, just making all the difference. So you might be able to connect um, to me now as I've enabled connections. You don't seem to be receiving too well today. So, I mean, guys, this is just, this is mad. You can see how excited I was when I kind of first, you know, tried this. Um, it, it's absolutely fantastic. He He's using a sound modem. So he's using basically the sound card of the computer to actually create the, the packets. 
Um, yeah, maybe a few noise issues. Um, the one, the GB7KUX, we'll try, we'll try later um, because I want to show you that because of the way it handles um, the, the chat. You can actually turn on names next to the chat and timestamps and everything. It, it, it's really, really amazing. This is real basic, this, this chat kind of thing we've got going on here. Um, it's just literally text going backwards and forwards. Um, by the way, you're asking about QTOM. It didn't seem to allow incoming connects. That was a problem I was having. It wasn't letting me... Um, it wasn't letting anybody connect, but it might be might be now. I'm going to ask him, do you want to try now? I'll disconnect. Hmm. Maybe I wasn't around. I wasn't... Maybe I was... Wasn't around to confirm it. I don't know. I tried disconnecting. Let's see if he can um, he can connect to me. Incoming connection. There we go. It is working then. Yeah, it's working now. Did you get a connection message? What I'm wondering is, is did it actually um, show this? Welcome to M6JK node. Maybe you have to type something, otherwise it disconnects after a while or something. That is so blooming cool. Yeah, it said, ah, yeah, excellent. It did then. Excellent. Oh, the X don't work. Excellent. So we're just discussing um, distances and stuff. Um, he is about 35 miles away from me, um, which I didn't know. I've only spoken to Brian on here. Um, basically, yeah, 35 miles away. So that's pretty good going. Um, direct. So we're doing packet direct directly over 35 miles. Crazy. Right, just as a final last shot, let's try connecting to... Um, Brian's gone now, it's disconnected. Um, it's got sick of me. But <laughs> let's just try GB7KUX one final time so I can try and show you it. So we're going to try and connect. Will we do it? Will we make the trip? I'm getting packets coming back. Look, it's receiving. Um, it's still going to be a little bit scratchy. I've had this... When this does it, it does it so quick. Um, you can see we're not really receiving anything from GB7KUX at the minute. The packets are there, but they're just not getting decoded. But the great thing about packet is it is so resilient. It will just keep trying. It will keep trying. It will keep trying to do it. I think the problem we've got is you can hear all that noise. It's just not strong enough at the moment. We've got just local noise. Maybe it's because it's the, the week day and there's... You know, but also, also the weather is probably not helping. Yeah, failed unfortunately. So we'll try again. I'll, it'll probably be in another video. So guys, I think this is a good place to wrap it up. Um, lots of information in this video. Um, thanks for bearing with me if you stuck around. Um, I'd really like to see some of you guys um, get involved in packet, especially if you've got a, a Kenwood T874. There's no excuse. It's really easy to do. Um, you can do this with a Bayer thing as well. You could do it. You can do it with anything really, because packet radio running on a sound card of a computer these days, um, it, it's e it's pretty easy to do. Um, as I say, I will cover how to do this on Windows and probably the Mac as well. Um, I haven't quite worked that one out yet, um, but. Yeah, the easiest way to do it is to just, you know, bite the bullet and just use a Raspberry Pi because, as I say, most of the stuff's built in. It's a lot easier to kind of visualise what's going on. Um, there are other things as well. I've got, there's so much I want to try with this. There's um, the BPQ software suite um, made by G8 BPQ, GM8 BBQ. And that is a guy called John Wiseman who I want to thank personally for the software. Brilliant. And also for the support as well. He's been kind of helping me a little bit in the um, in the chats um, over radio so I've been connecting to radio and that was kind of what I wanted to achieve with this when I started I, I thought if I could get a connection um, over radio without emailing anyone without using any modern technology or anything like that just literally use this 
um, and then I could get a chat going and it, it's happened amazing you know we've had some good conversations backwards and forwards um you know john's even added some features to the to the server that i, I kind of you know was, was asking about um chat history and, and stuff like that um but yeah I'm, I'm just stoked on how this has kind of gone and i want to see more of you guys on it um get get up and running i know there's some of you out there that are going to absolutely love this as i've said and yeah it'd just be good to see you on and yeah because at the moment i can take connections as well so all we got to do is schedule a time maybe i can do this on a live stream or something and if you're in the area or not actually because i mean brian's 35 miles away from me so yeah anyway guys hope you enjoyed this one go get involved in packet and i'll catch you next time